Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dennis Doda. And I'm Tracy McRae. You know, around the world, 175,000 deaths are attributed to aortic aneurysms each year. The aorta, which you might already know, is the largest blood vessel in the body. It carries blood directly from your heart, and a variety of factors may cause the aorta to dilate, like an overstretched balloon. And if it should burst, this is not good, right? It's possible that a person could bleed to death internally in just a matter of minutes. And because aneurysms may be present without a single symptom, most are discovered incidentally while doctors are treating other conditions. Aortic aneurysms can be repaired using stents, but in the more complex cases, kidney and intestinal arteries are involved in the procedure. A stent allowing branches to reach into those arteries is being tested right here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And we're very fortunate today because here to discuss this clinical trial is Mayo Clinic vascular and endovascular surgeon, Dr. Gustavo Oderich, and we want to welcome you to the program, Dr. Oderich. Thanks for having me. So what causes an aortic aneurysm? The most common aneurysms we see are degenerative aneurysms. There is a component of family history, uh, and there are risk factors. Some of them are acquired. The biggest one is cigarette smoking. It's more common in men. Uh, these patients often have several cardiovascular risk factors that we call, such as you know, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, previous uh, history of coronary disease. And then there are some aneurysms that are purely genetic. Uh, they are less frequent, and some can be infected or inflammatory. And sometimes there are no symptoms whatsoever. Uh, so what kind of indications might one have that they need to be treated or checked out for this? So, yes, and the majority of aneurysms, they are detected incidentally. They are asymptomatic, and they are detected because patients have an ultrasound or a CT scan to investigate other symptoms. Now, sometimes they can cause abdominal pain, back pain. Uh, they can actually send clot down to the legs, you know, embolization. Once you have an aneurysm, the main factor that indicates repair is the size. So in man, the size we start to get concern is 5.5 centimeters, which turns out to be about two and a half inches. And in women, it's five centimeters. Sometimes it's the shape of the aneurysm. For example, if you have an aneurysm that's like an outpouching, like a little sac, a saccular aneurysm, those are more concerning. Or if they are growing too fast. And so how do you repair them? How do you fix an aneurysm? There are two ways to treat uh, an aneurysm, Tracy. The time honored is open surgery that has been done almost the same way for the last 50 years. It involves uh, an incision in the belly, typically up and down. Uh, we have to stop the, the blood supply to the aorta. And then we replace the area that's large with a polyester graft that is hand-sewn to the aorta. The other alternative, which nowadays the majority of the aneurysms are treated with stents, that is what we call endovascular treatment that is done with little punctures in the groin. And the stent, in essence, is a, a, a device that has a fabric, either polyester or Gore-Tex, and it has a, a metallic cage that springs open inside the, the vessel. Is it a benefit to using a stent like that over the surgical? There are several benefits. This has been very well studied. Stents, in essence, they decrease the risk of death from the operation. They decrease the risk of complications from the operation. The hospital stay is shorter. The recovery time is faster. Uh, they do need surveillance. You know, do you have to check on them every so often. And there is an associated risk that they need to have be revised in the future. Most of those revisions are done under local anesthetic. How common is it for the aneurysm to extend into branching arteries that feed other vital organs of the body? That's less common. About 20 to 30 percent of the aneurysms we see then is are what we call complex aneurysms. They are involving side branches of the aorta. In a center like Mayo, this is actually increasing because the community refers those patients that are not straightforward, they have complex aneurysms. I'm not quite sure that I understand how this new thing that's being done at Mayo Clinic is different than what was previously done. So first of all, tell us about the 3D printer version of a stent. So 
most of the stands that are available that are used widely in this country and you know in the world they are simpler stands for simpler aneurysms below the kidney or aneurysms in the chest that do not involve side branches once an aneurysm involves side branches it creates a big challenge because you have to keep blood supply to a kidney to a liver to the intestine so that requires a special stent which and is how called, many of those side branches are there Four, just said, typically okay. four, but you okay. know, there are variations, you know, there are patients with more than one kidney artery or others that have one of the vessels occluded already. Huh. Okay. And so how is the 3D printer version different? So the 3D printer we've been using to rehearse, to plan procedures, to help design stents. Uh, the stent itself is not 3D printed, ah. okay, but we do print the anatomy of the patient to rehearse the operation ahead of time. Sometimes we do that also to teach physicians and teach residents in training or when the operation has never been done. Some of these stents were like the very first in, in human implant. So this is the very same 3D printed aorta that you're likely, that you are going to find in the patient that you're treating. So then you practice that briefly or, or through the whole procedure. In advance. So this is an exact replica of the anatomy of the patient. So we can rehearse every step of the procedure and we can anticipate difficulties. For example, sometimes it's difficult to get to the right kidney. The anatomy is a particular way that may affect selection of a particular catheter or approach. Other times we find, you know, the stent is not ideal for that anatomy. It just doesn't sit well on that particular curve, etc. So we can actually change the choice of the stand sometimes. We're running out of time, but do you have a patient story that you can share with us of how this has helped someone? Yes, we have a patient that actually uh, we had the opportunity to use one of these complex stents and also to do the 3D print model to rehearse. Uh, this was a patient that was treated in December of last year with an aneurysm involving the kidney arteries. We had the chance to do the first implant in the United States of this particular stent. And we use the anatomy of the patient actually to rehearse ahead of time. And how did he do? He did very well. He did require a revision of one of the kidney stands after a couple of months, but recovered, and now he continues to do very well. So is this the future of uh, repairing aortic aneurysms? I think it's the present already. <laughs> and uh, I certainly think is is going to be the future in in. In, in most centers. One last note, you at Mayo Clinic are conducting for the FDA early feasibility studies, and, and that's done in very few places. Very few seem to be trusted enough to actually work on the research, but also utilize them within patients as well. Yes, Dennis. Early feasibility is a new pathway for the FDA to allow centers to have early access to technology. And yes, they do highly select the centers, the physicians, they have that access. And it's very monitored by the FDA. Dr. Gustavo, Dr. Gustavo Oderick, Mayo Clinic vascular and endovascular surgeon, thanks so much for joining us to discuss aortic aneurysms and this exciting new surgical advances tested here at Mayo Clinic. Thanks for having me.